Okay, let's talk a bit about my idea and just idea generation in general. In my own illustration work, I either start from a brief given to me by a client, or in my personal work, I tend to draw on moments of inspiration, visual ideas that might come to me when maybe I'm out on a walk or perhaps watching a film or reading a book. They could also be inspired by real events in my life. My main focus when deciding on an illustration is always on creating something fun and that I think I would enjoy painting. Illustration is laborious at times, so I want to make sure I enjoy the process and the result. On top of this, I try to think of a simple scenario and story moment that is worth conveying or says something, no matter how simple. A lot of my own illustration ideas tend to be focused around little character-driven scenarios, so they're rarely complex, and in fact, I don't think a good illustration needs to be complex in the idea. Since we've only got one image to convey that idea, keeping things simple and clear is often best. This idea could be as simple as a small mouse fighting a huge dragon, or something a bit more complex like a young pirate finding a magical treasure chest, while a creepy form emerges from the shadows behind them. The key thing for me is coming up with a scenario which there is enough of a story to be interesting, while also giving enough ingredients to play with to make the illustration visually interesting. Execution is what's really important. Even the simplest of ideas can still be visually entertaining when executed right. So one question I always ask myself is, what is this illustration's purpose? And I think it's important to clarify that before I get started. It's like, I need to know what the purpose of it is, obviously. You know, otherwise I won't be able to draw it effectively. So for this particular image, the purpose was to effectively communicate the idea behind this tutorial. So character-driven illustration, that's really my purpose. And I want to tell a fun, engaging story. I want it to be character and performance driven. And I want to connect it to some of my inspirations and art and, you know, childhood and stuff like that. So that's the main purpose of this illustration. So I started thinking through ideas, what might be a fun topic to draw, which was character driven. So I like drawing like uh, kids going off on adventures and things like that. And I wanted to do something that I hadn't really done before. So I draw a lot of pirate themed things. And I want to try and avoid that and do something completely new. So thinking through some potential scenarios, I eventually landed on a haunted house theme. Basically a group of children, maybe young teens, maybe 11, 12 years old. Uh, maybe encountering a ghost or a monster or something in like a haunted house. It's a simple idea, and I've not really done anything like that before. I've never done a haunted house illustration before, and it immediately appealed to me because it was—it sounded fun. I could see it in my head already. Uh, it just had a lot of drama as well already built into the idea, like the conflict was clear. And so, yeah, with all those boxes being ticked, I was like, "That's that's fine. I'm I'm going to stick with this idea for it." Also, I I do like a bit of horror, ghost stories, things like that. So with the idea basically in place, I, I kind of wanted to explore it a bit more and say, well, w what are the details of this idea? It's not just a bunch of kids in a haunted house. There's more to it than that. So I, I like to draw on inspirations from things I like, things I've read, like books. Uh, I, I like Stephen King. Uh, I've been reading a bit of Stephen King recently. Also a bit of Ray Bradbury. Um, and yeah, books like Stephen King's It, they've got this group of kids and they're dealing with this this monster, the, the evil clown. And so I was channeling that kind of vibe, the, the Losers Club vibe, this bunch of kids grouping together. I was also drawing upon, I guess, things I liked as a kid, 80s, 90s films, things like The Goonies. Um, also, I, I grew up watching things like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And so I want to try and bring some elements of my uh, childhood kind of inspirations into it. I think that's an important thing to do, especially if you're designing for kids as well, to be able to channel your own childhood into your work. On top of this, I was also thinking about kids' books that I used to read. So I, I like to read The Three Investigators, The Hardy Boys. And while I didn't really read The Famous Five, it had the same kind of vibe, you know, group of kids going off an adventure. So those things were kind of playing into this idea as well. A 
Okay, so an illustration I mentioned in the introduction video, it's all about that one key story moment. Uh, and so I, was, I thought about what is this moment going to be? What's going to be the most interesting moment or one of the most? And, you know, it should be clear. It should be concise. It shouldn't be too complicated that the idea isn't communicated uh, very easily. It doesn't have to be high drama. It could be something simple and relaxed. But I like to draw things with lots of conflict. I like the drama. So, yeah, I decided I want it to be engaging, energetic, maybe a bit over the top. So I started thinking about what are the good moments I could draw. So maybe the kids are entering the house for the first time and they're seeing a, a shadow in the distance. Maybe it's the moment where they first encounter the ghost. You know, they've been exploring the house, nothing there, and then boom, they discover the ghost or the monster for the first time. Possibly they're trying to escape. So they've already encountered the ghost and they're like, oh, let's get out of here. And they're running, trying to get out the door, something like that. So yeah, just thinking through these ideas. I mean, the, the key thing is, are they inside the house? Are they outside the house? Have they encountered a, a ghost or a monster? Or are they just kind of trying to find their way through this building? Are they in the attic? Maybe they're on the stairwell. Um, and it, when I first came up with the idea, I immediately saw this image in my head of a group of kids bunched up on the stairwell with maybe a ghost coming down the stairs towards them. So yeah, I was thinking about all these things, all this, the setting, also the bigger setting. Is it set in the UK, like the United Kingdom? Is it set maybe somewhere else? Like, um, it could be anywhere really. Where is it set? Uh, is it a small village somewhere? An old Victorian manor house? So yeah, all these things were going through my head. Also, I, I see it being set probably in the 90s, mainly because when it was the 90s for me, I was that age, between 9 and 13. So I kind of, I think it'd be fun to set it in that time when I was growing up. And I can bring some of the 90s vibe into the clothing, maybe in like shell suits and bright colours, maybe a bit of grunge in some of the clothing, skateboards, all that kind of stuff. So I think it'd be a nice kind of contrast to have those kids having a nice bright and vibrant feel and contrast them with the old dusty Victorian manor house. Next I'm starting to think about well, who are the characters in this story? And I think I already knew there's going to be a group of children. And they're going to be about, you know, high school age. Well, a bit younger. So probably between 9 and 13 years old. That kind of age when, you know, kids start to get a bit more bold and go places they shouldn't start to explore. Um, and so I can imagine this group of kids going and saying, hey, we're not allowed to go in this haunted house. Let's go in and explore and see what's there. Uh, likely I want them to be quite a mixed bunch, different ages, possibly. I want them to all look different. I want them to all be very different designs in the characters. I don't want it to be too similar to each other. And I want them to feel like they're kind of an, a group of kids just thrown together, forced together in this moment of mutual conflict. So a bit of an oddball group. And basically they should really all have different personalities coming through in the image. And they're all reacting to the situation differently. Uh, and I just think it'll add a lot of visual interest, a bit more drama, adds a bit of humour as well. And of course, I want a wee dog in my illustration. I always put dogs in. I just, it's just something I do because I love dogs. I also need to think about point of view. What is the point of view of my illustration? So basically, whose point of view are we seeing this story through? Is it through the, the ghosts? eyes or is it through the kids eyes basically my instinct is i want the story to be about the kids but it might be worth exploring different options when i start to thumbnail lastly i'm going to think about tone and mood what mood do i want this piece to have my work tends to be quite light-hearted and fun and i want to stick with that vibe here i'm not going to make it dark or you know scary or anything I, i'm kind of channeling that Saturday morning cartoon kind of vibe from the 80s, 90s, things I grew up with. So it's not going to be too serious at all. In the same vein, I want the image to be spooky but not scary. So I, I think that's a good kind of place for the, the image. Spooky fun, that's what I'm going for. And that those two words, spooky fun, kind of sums up the vibe I'm going for in this image. 
So that's pretty much where I started with for this idea. Um, it's no longer just a group of kids exploring a haunted house. There's just a bit more depth to it. I've got a clearer idea of the mood and the tone. I've got a clear idea of who I want these kids to be and the vibe and the inspirations I want to draw upon and put into the piece. And also I've got a bit of an idea of the, the story moment I want to tell. So I think getting this stuff sorted in your head before you start drawing is a really good idea. In fact, before you start doing reference and research, because it can really inform what you're going to look for when you're researching. So as we move forward into researching and sketching out our illustration, having this idea more clearly defined in our heads, it's really going to help us. Okay, task one. So if you're following along, then the first task is basically to come up with your own illustration idea. And I want you to think about key strong story moment, which really sells the idea well. I want you to think about your cast of characters, how they're going to perform, what they're doing, what the conflict is they're engaging in. And also think about inspirations personal to you, things that inspire you, and try and bring that stuff into your work. So that's task one. And, and just basically have fun with it.